them and that industry could evolve in a productive way for both the people inside the hotels and the people of the islands. You know, I think extremely simply, so I don't know anything about economics, but the way I'm thinking is economics. And that is, when I see those hotels that are going up all over the Caribbean, huge hotels, and when I drive past some part of a Caribbean city, which not necessarily are slums, or is a slum, then I see the contrast that exists. And so does everyone see the contrast. What I think is very embittering is that the governments refuse to see the contrast because they think the contrast is a necessity. Any government, whether it's St. Lucia or Jamaica or anyone that thinks that that kind of comparison, that kind of division is a necessity to survive is a serious, serious admission of futility. I don't see why it should cost that much money to educate artists. What is the point of educating artists? Because artists proclaim the very thing you're advertising. You know? They're the ones who are doing your advertising. So where are they, why are they not supported? Why should I go in St. Lucia now? I, you know, or come here, go to anywhere in St. Lucia where the hotels are very, very elegant. <clears throat> Some of the villas there are extreme, extremely sophisticated. But I have to go into a place that for the last 30 years or whatever has been a source of embarrassment to me. I pay my taxes, you know, I'm a St. Lucian. Why don't we have a museum and why don't we have a theater? We don't have them because the people who we elect don't think they are necessary. Well, we have to find a way of not voting for these people. We have to find a way of changing things that is, you know, very, very severe now because we are threatened with that kind of extinction. Every view now is on sale in the Caribbean. <laughs> um, just curious, I, I, I want to ask this question. Um, uh, there are some Caribbean great intellectuals who took a stab and had sort of political careers. I think of Césaire, um, obviously CLR James was politically active. Did you ever consider um, getting into St. Lucian politics in terms of actually offering yourself as a representative or did you ever do that? I want a horse and I want armor. That's <laughs> the only way I'll get into politics. <laughs> no, not actively. No. But I think, I, you know, working, when I worked with the Trinidad Theatre Workshop, a fantastic company, a brilliant actors, um, then that was something political. It was political, if you want to call it that, right? Because it, it did things, um, it drew audiences and so on. <clears throat> and it was a form of federation, in a sense, to do it. We can take about two more questions. Good night. Um, Mr. Walcott, I want to find out, um, do you think that the play Dream of Monkey Mountain is in some way a mockery of the Christian faith, the Bible, and also the Jews? Um, she's asking about Dream of Monkey Mountain. Uh, she wants to know if there's a, a way in which the, the play, in fact, is mocking Christianity or, 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 or Judaism. No, no, I don't think so. Um, don't forget the damage that both sects have done, right? Um, no, it's not intended to do that. Uh, if you mention the other two sects, and you're talking in a way racially too, then Dream and Monkey Mountain is emphasizing uh, <coughs> that the the leader of the character should find his identity, find out who he is. And it isn't the two other elements, the Jud Judaism or Christianity, can't find them for him. They have to be examined, self-examined, and then the discovery happens. That's true for all, of all experience. 
Just curious, I, I have a question about June Monkey Mountain. Um, the, na the names obviously are, the names are some.